There is a skill that is crucial for success in physics exams. Let's illustrate this with a problem that I've seen multiple times in different exam boards. So let's say that I have a slope and the angle of the slope is theta. Shall we just say that this horizontal distance here is 100 meters? and we don't know the height. So I'm just gonna say that the height is just h. Now, let's put a little car along the slope like this, and I'm gonna say that the mass of the car is 800 kilograms. That car is providing some engine output to be able to go up the slope. So should we say that the power provided by the engine is quite a lot, let's say 20,000 watts. I'm making some numbers uh, actually, so I don't think that this is uh, very much. To make it more interesting, we're also going to add a frictional force, which is opposite to the motion. So should we just say that the total drag force is a thousand Newtons. We're going to keep the car to be moving at a constant speed, so let's say 10 meters per second. My question is, with this information provided, can we figure out the height h if the car is moving at a constant speed? And this is the crucial step for success in physics exams, and that is multi-step calculations. Anytime we have a power output and a constant velocity given, we typically tend to use this equation that power is equal to force times velocity. Okay, now let's think about the balance of the forces in this case. We have the frictional force sort of acting down here along the slope. We will also have a component of gravity which is acting along the same direction. So uh, this component, which is parallel to the slope, will just be equal to mg times the sine of the angle. The force from the engine will have to balance out both the frictional force and the component of the weight along the slope. Okay, so we can say that F will be mg sine theta plus the force F. Now I can plug this into here and I can say that the power will be equal to mg sine theta plus F times V. Now I've got this, I've got pretty much everything here, so I can just work out my angle, and if I work out my angle, I'm in business to find this height H. We can expand things out, so we're gonna get mg sine of theta times V plus FV, mg sine theta v is equal to the power take away fv, meaning that sine theta will be the power take away fv, divide that by mgv. Theta will be the inverse sine of the power, which was 20,000, take away the frictional force, which was 1,000, multiply by 10, then divide that by 800 times by 9.81 for g, multiply by 10 yet again. If we put this into a calculator, we're going to get around 7.32 degrees. So this angle here is 7.32. And now we can just use the tangent to figure out our height h, so I'm going to say that tan of 7.32 degrees will be equal to opposite over the adjacent, which is going to be h uh, over 100, meaning that the height will be 100 multiplied by the tan of the angle or about 12.8 meters, shall we just call it 13 meters. For success in exams, this is definitely not enough and you should definitely check out yet another crucial skill. And this video is right over here.